All right, welcome on guys, welcome back to my interview series. Today I'm joined by Birmingham's very own Superman. You'll see him in here, right? You'll see him in the cape. You can talk shit and bang you in the face too. It's Tommy fucking end. Well go on, cuz. Well go on, man. Thanks for having us here. Uh, creations with a K. We make it a bit more special. Yeah, I need to <laughs> bro. I wanted the one with the C, but it was already taken. So. Oh, I see. Nah, but it makes it original. It makes it better. It's, it's, you know, I like it. I like to say energy with NRG. You know what I mean? Son, you need to say oh, sorry. I like to say energy with NRG as well. So like, I like to break things down. No, nah, I hear what you say. I hear what you say. So, fam, let's get into what got you into boxing and not MMA. Well, MMA. Well, yeah, I'll start with boxing. I was uh, I was in my uh, I was having a tantrum as as I did as a young kid. And um, I went into my bedroom and just destroyed my door because that's what I do when I get angry, I break things. Um, and obviously my mom couldn't handle me and she got the police come round. And the police officer came in, it came in and he was like, have you done that? He goes, well, I'm a fully grown man. I couldn't do that to the door. You need to go into boxing, you do. So I just started going. Like, it's like, you know, from that from that one comment, I just went down to the gym and started uh, boxing in a, oh God, it was, a, it was a pub at the time, I think. And I walked in there and I, t- and I just tried to beat someone up straight away. <laughs> And, um, you know, they took me under the wing and, uh, and I started training with some people in Wheelie Castle. There was a, a pub called The Raven. I think it was called The Raven. And uh, I started in there, I think. And then, um, yeah, I just... I just the Shard End one, isn't it? The Raven No, it's in Wheelie Castle, over, th- over the other side of Birmingham. Oh, okay. No, I used to grow up around Shard End, though, as a kid. No one knows this. Huh? Grew up around there, grew up around. I used to hang around Shard as a kid, but I never... Oh, yeah. okay, no, no. Because I know one of my mates was doing security at The Raven in Shard End, didn't he? So oh, Raven, Raven, he's in Chardon actually. Sorry, yeah, but might, no, might I thought no, because I'm not, pu- I'm not into pub culture, so there's probably yeah. beer of them, and nah, that's what yeah, I was wondering. He's another Raven. I d- might, maybe I got the name wrong, you know, but I know it was in Willie Castle, and I know it was like a pub, and they transformed it into a gym, and then there was a couple of lads in there which I've got the name, but I remember Mick and Dennis, and then they got a, a dance hall, and then I, then I used to go to the dance hall a lot. Uh, that was when I used to like go from work. I used to go straight from work and go straight to there. I just, I just, I just love fighting. I've watched it since I was a kid. My dad always watched it. He had like all the, the, the VHS, the, the, the tapes, yeah. and uh, I used to watch them all. And obviously, my, I, I fell in love with um, Marvin Hagler. Um, and then, like, obviously, I feel like he won the fight against Sugar Ray. But anyways, MMA, yeah. The uh, second part of the question. Now, hold on, let me let me just stop you there for a second. So, y- do you feel that's where your style comes from? Because you eat shots for free, bro. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? And Marvin Hagler, you can, he knows, bro, you can tell. He takes shots, bro. He comes straight for you, and uh, he never takes a step backwards. He's a Taurus, he's a bull, and, and, he, and he fights with both sides. He's, he's, he's got it all, man. Like, he's a complete fighter, in my opinion. Rest in peace, Bernie. He's passed away. He's yeah, 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 unfortunately. Yeah, but do you think that's where your boxing style, like, is influenced from? Because obviously, Marvin I'm has more of a traditional, traditional stance, is more orthodox, guard up. Yours is more like, na 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 na, boom. Yeah, it everywhere, it's all over the place. Well, fighting, you know, p- I think people do restrict themselves a lot, you know. Um, you know, we do want to see cl- proper boxing and clinical boxing, and th- th- there is a place for it. But, um, you know, it's a, it's, a f- it's, a, it's a fighting in the day. People, two men that are using their fist, and, there's a, you know, that's get, not get hit is basically the fundamental of it. There's nothing more else to, that you can say about it. Um, and, yeah, that, I, I, f- I don't think I think people do limit themselves. They say that you can only throw the punch this way, and then when you do that, then you got to do this, and you got it. It's just like, what is that robotics? Never made sense to me. Never will. Uh, I hear that, right? But fam, it's easier for a fat man like me to slip a shot than like you know to do what you're doing, bro. I'm too slow for that. A slip is nice, bro. I just yeah, little little movement, yeah. Yeah, like that could come through. So if you're shooting here, I just tap him. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but shot yeah. or lad, fam. <laughs> we all don't have your athleticism, you know. Bro, yeah. right now, I gas out after two jabs, you know. Yeah. Bro. Well, you're not a fighter, are you? You're not a boxer. Nah, nah listen, you're now, you're now, now yeah. I'm dashing chairs at people, bro. Ah! If it goes wrong, you know. Survival. <laughs> if it goes wrong, wrong. <laughs> you know them ones there. You make a scene so you can walk away and be like, lucky there's cameras here, fam. But MMA, I, I, did, I was good at that too. And then, um, you know, I had a really good jab kick, had a good, good, good few kicks, a good few, I was really strong at wrestling. But when they started to get me to lie down on the mats and... You know, I feel it was James Henry Chambers and Muda, mm-hmm. and he was fr- friends with uh, Tom Breeze at the time. And I was trying to do some jujitsu, and then he told me to get me to let go of my back and wrap his legs around his waist. And I just walked out. The f- I just, this ain't for me, mate. This ain't for me. You're in personal space. This is not for me, bro. I don't I care how that. manly they say it is. That's just not comfortable for me. I hear that. But then how did you take into wrestling then? Because wrestling is similar. I wouldn't say it's the same as yeah. jujitsu. Like I mean, like judo, judo, and wrestling. I can literally get my advantage on my opponent. Like when they when I get into a close capacity. But 
as for jujitsu, a bit more transitions and holding certain positions and waiting for your, your opponents to like, open up certain um, weak points, so then you can you can pr- proceed and climb and maul them. No, I, g- and I, don't I, want I get that, that. I get that. But you know, like say, imagine now, right? I faint to shoot just to get you by the hip. So I got the level change. Ch- turn around. I'll take you back so I can land the suplex, the belly to back. That's still in the same amount of private space. Personal space as jujitsu. Yeah, I mean, but I said the grabbing and stuff is not so like a little wrestle. You know, you you know what I mean. I'll, I'll have a laugh with my, with my lads and that. We all fucking have a wrestle, but wrapping your legs around someone's waist and sitting on your back and training <laughs> is not for me. It's stand for me, bro. I'm not willing to <laughs> learn it. I don't want to know. <laughs> if you're in my kind of personal space now, I'm uncomfortable. So that's that's what it was for me. Really, it was just me. What you know, do, like you can wrestle, but wrapping your legs around, like, lying on your back. Can you lie on your back for me, please? I'm gonna mount you. No. I'll stick to boxing, thank I you. I hear that still. I hear that still. <laughs> I hear that still. Bro. It's That's uncomfortable, bro. It's one of them sometimes, any right? If if I feel that yeah, I can't take the guy on standing up. That's why I got into it. I thought to myself, I can't take shots from everyone, bro. I'm wearing yeah. the cabbage. Well, yeah, I mean, that's when I went to the MMAG, the UTC in uh, Erdington. I went there and I was battering them all at boxing. And they was all going, oh, I can't take you down. Oh, you too. Because they couldn't really do work it out. And that's why a lot of fighters do MMA, because the striking is lacking. So they try to, you know, put, push their, uh, their strengths in other areas. And that's what, and most people, it's, they're not willing to do that. They're not willing, like for me, I'm not willing to, to learn that kind of aspect of the game. But yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the MMA guys are poor strikers, <laughs> my opinion. So how did your fight with Quinton come about, fam? Quinton, I've known him for. I uh, went to John Page Gym in Five Ways to walk there, get my head punched every day. Uh, and Quinton Hillock was a professional at the time. Sam Eggerson just walked into the gym. Uh, you know, there was Dee Mitchell, there was like Max Maxwell, who was quite current at the time. You had Craig uh, Rovers, who was preparing for the uh, prize fighter. Um, and obviously, Quinton Hillock was there, and he had a couple of fights, notable fights with uh, Eddie McIntosh. But he was smoking a lot of cannabis and he was, uh, you know, he was just a good lad. He was just like, he, he's similar to me as a mixed race. He's, you know, he loves, he loves himself a bit, you know, he's a bit good looking kid. And, um, you know, he's a good he's a good person to me. He's a good friend. And I've known him since them days. So, obviously, he had, me coming to the gym as a complete raw, like, just a kid off the street, yeah? Just a hard kid, basically. And he, and he them being professional boxers, it was like, he always had that category. I mean, a different category to him. Um, and he's always had that, but obviously, as time's gone on, I've never stopped doing it. I've always, you know, when pr- when the, the boxing board of control didn't give me my license, I, I said I'm going to continue. I don't think just because you said I got poor footwork doesn't mean I can't box because footwork don't determine like a boxer. Do you know what I mean you can have really good footwork and still get knocked out? Do you know what I mean? So um, I decided to well, carry on boxing, and obviously, I've started to get a bit of traction with it. He's obviously got a bit jealous of it, and but me, I'm quite naive. And I don't know, can't really read sometimes when someone is my friend or not, and they're right next to me. So he was an actual enemy that I just, I couldn't see. I couldn't see because I've known him for so long and just thought like, maybe, you know, this, that, and the other boy. If I, you know, if I play this message now. Then, you know, this is what this guy, uh, Riddler told me, he says, he ain't your friend, Tom. Because I kept calling my mate, kept calling my mate. And he goes, he ain't your friend. Uh, I don't even know if I she, just yeah. thought mate is something you say to people like, hello. You might not want to actually talk to him. It's just some shit you say. What do you you're mean? You're right, mate. Like, look, I could walk down that street and call everyone. You're right, mate. That's no, like, I'm, as I mean, like I've known him for years, and we've always like trained together, we've done sparring together. And when we're sparring, obviously, he thinks he thinks he's, he's got. If he thinks I'm going 100, percent trying my absolute best, and he thinks he's just like peppering me and just taking me for the gears. I'm literally doing the same for you, mate. And he and then he got offended by this because like we've got online, we're watching Lennox Clark fight, and obviously a few comments are made. I'm a bit drunk. You get me. But he was always after me, but I didn't know that. He was trying to get a reaction from me this whole time, but I didn't, I wasn't, couldn't see it. When he got the reaction he wanted online, he was like, nah, you talk shit me on me line. Now it's going to have to be a real fight. I'm thinking, bro, I'm really, I was drunk. I'm just saying I'd beat you. I do think I would, but like, it's not really that, pro- like, just allow it. Nah, nah, you can't do that. You have to fight me. You have to fight me. And he pressured me and pressured me and pressured me. And I was like, he must have thought, like, I was saying to him, um, like, nah, I'm scared. Like, like I'm, I'm scared, so I'm trying to say a different thing to get out of it. But really, he was a friend to me, and I didn't want to hurt him, and I didn't feel like I needed to prove I was better than him because I was bigger than him. And I said to him, "I'm, I'm too big and too strong, and you ain't gonna have a that chance." That at the end of the fight when you're just standing, leaning on the ropes, waiting for him, bro. You know, when I saw that, I thought to myself, "Yo, like, uh, you know, when I watched that f- fight, the first few things I thought, yo, my man is gonna hug you. He's just hugging you. You can take a few shots. You give some funny shots, but they work." And then somehow, I bet you bees put money on him. 
Did, did that, you reckon? Did you see how vexed he was when my man wanted to go? I go, no, blood, no, man. Yeah, I know. Get back in there now, get back in there. But you know, I think he was vexed though. You must have put a bag on him. I think there was, a, I think they were vexed because uh, he also they spent all day getting that vicinity ready for them. They cleaned it all out, you know what I mean, and they talked all this shit. And he was giving it like m- the most energy you've ever seen it. Do you get me? And and I think he was banking on me pulling out because I didn't go for a rap, like I did like a rap battle. I walked out like something. I feel like doing something. I won't do it. Doesn't mean I'm fucking afraid or nothing. It's just, just just don't want to do it. So he took that as like, oh, I'm always a bottler. Um, and then obviously when that that came about. The, the, yeah, he was he was already beat in that second round where he got knocked out of the ring. I, I, you know, he's pissing blood for a week or two, and he went. He said he had a stomach bug, but really, I injured his body really badly, um, and basically, he didn't want to get back in the ring, so he had to. Yeah, needed that that round out to recover. So it was over. It was a knockout. He said I couldn't last three, a few rounds of him. He didn't last two with me. You know, he says, "Oh, whatever." You can say whatever you want. He was battered. Got, but got, got his energy back. He got refreshed. He had a second opportunity, and that kind of prolonged the fight for a bit because people came out to see some, and then it was over within minutes. Because you know, I think I've got most of my fights are first round knockouts, and I've put, I've retired a lot of people. I've fought people, and they've never fought again. So it's, it's common for me. Like I'm, it's not known. You know, Regis Virgo would have got knocked out in the second round, but the referee kept jumping in and saying, "Oh, stop, stop! Can't give him ten counts. Oh, his gum shield. Give him a second to put his gum shield. Oh, another standing count. Just let me finish the count." No, I hear that, I hear that. But what made you wear a cape to that fight? I got ah! told, this is where I'm going, you know, fucking your Superman in it, right? Bro, man comes, listen, I got told the story. Because I come to pick someone yes. up. He goes, bro, my man come to pick me up in the cape. <laughs> I didn't know where this was going. <laughs> we go there. And then what happened, happened already. Well, uh, you want know about Jim, Janet? Come to beat Jim. When we went over to Jim's house and I jumped out in the car with a fucking cape on and he just looked at me like, this geezer. <laughs> And no, I'm like, bro, we're ready to fight. We're ready to fight. It's when I come to fight Quinton. But the reason I came up with the cape for, for, for um, um, Podmore, because obviously uh, my music entrance, if you hear it, the um, no one's gonna take me alive. That's a, that's of a, dub, there's a dubstep remix of Knights of the Cine- Cineas or something like that. And um, it's Spartans. They're all, they're all Spartans. And like they're, they're, that's what it is. They all wear the red capes. So obviously I represent nice down gloves up. So I had my had that printed on the back of the cape, and uh, I might you know my intention was to come out and enjoy the enjoy the occasion, but obviously things didn't go the way they did because he pushed me and they all came out in the cape that day, you know, representing Spartans. That's what I do it for. It's not a Superman outfit; it's actually a Spartan. If I was going to be a su- if I was going to be a superhero, I'd be Hancock because I go from a waste man to the most strongest person you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that one, fam. I'd rather be Hulk, fam. One bag, you don't get back up, fam. Well, look, I think, I think, I think Hancock could, would just take, could fly him up into space, innit? Nah, man, Hulk's too bad, fam. Hulk finds a way, but Hulk's bad. Man. But Superman kills Hulk, Hulk, doesn't he? By taking him into the, uh, the higher atmosphere and he, and he freezes up. I don't know how... I've, I haven't seen that, bro, and I don't know if that's a word because they're DC and he's Marvel, so it's not like... Oh, but well, I've seen Superman fight the, uh, the Hulk and that's what they did. Oh, no, it was Iron Man, weren't it? Iron Man took him up. Iron Man threw him up into the atmosphere innit, and throws him up. Like, oh, he's took him off the planet. He's no, no, useless. Listen, if I see that, bro, I have to bat up that right. I am a bit angry though, innit? Nah, like, <laughs> you know, if I go up to the right and like it done me some people. But yeah, sorry, I'll slow a bit down as well because I'm a bit hyped. Right, yeah. Nah, do you think, fam? Do you think of it? Like, um, so what was the next thing I was thinking? Yeah, who are you fighting now, Perry Atkinson? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, Perry has called me out. I think Perry's been watching me since Ginger Dingers Two. He's got comfortable with me. I think he's been watching me a long time and obviously he, he believes in his skills and obviously he's looked at me and he's thinking, you know what, you know, this geezer is, you know, he, he's a bit wild uh, and he thinks that basically that he's, you know, it's a good opportunity for him as well. I think he's been learning from me because a lot of people do, I do stuff and say things and then not long after people tend to do it and, they, and I know it's come from me, but they don't want to admit it. But I think he's, he's see, he looks at the idea that me, when I'm calling out all these big names such as Ty Mitchell and um, Frieza McBones, and all these people. Um, yeah, you had uh, you went for Shannon Briggs, and then some other geezer from Brooklyn come for you. Uh, David Flat Sparks. Yeah, he went nowhere though. How come? Because because he like most people. I mean, he, it was easy for him to make an excuse not to fight me by calling me not a proper fighter. It's easy to go, oh, this geezer's nothing. I get nothing for fighting him, or you know, he's not a proper boxer, or uh, uh, you know, anything of it's easy to do that than it is to get in the ring and and, and see if you can survive. You know what I mean? Because uh, he obviously looked at me talking shit to freeze my bones. So then, obviously, that uh, Freezer Burns looks like he's got he's got a very domineering look. You know, you see him, you look at his profile, and you think, "Fuck me, he looks amazing." He's an absolute shit boxer, 
and I'd batter the life out of him. So I look at him and I know what I can and can't do to certain people. And I don't, I don't think he's a good boxer. I think he's a good, he's an athlete and he can do a lot, but he can't fight. I can fight and I'll, I'll, I'll demolish him and I'll gut it. I didn't get to go down there and do the job because um, they tried to take advantage of me while I was just training passively, you know what I mean? And try to come down in and, sp and spring on me. Um, and mug me off and get me to fight for free for one entertainment again, which I'm not going to be full victim to because after after because I never got paid a single penny against Qu uh, Quinton, and obviously they were told me it was a ten thousand pound reward for the winner on the table, and I didn't see a penny. Bro, calm down. So calm, after the disc comes out, big man going to try and punch him up now, bro. Ten bags. Who punch up who, Quinton? Yeah, hey, that ten bags is still there, bro. Trump, he said to me, he said to me, I'm going to give you the ten bags if you do uh, doghouse rules, which means like, no, one bell goes and it's the last man standing, um, which I would have fucking happily done. I'd do it for five, five grand, mate. You know what I mean? I'll kill you for five grand. <laughs> but the fact is I got there and I, and, and I was very angry because I knew that there was no money and I knew that I was just being manipulated. And uh, Baz, Baz was there and I spoke kind of off to Baz and I do apologise that but I'll come in and I was just angry and he goes what are we doing then and I went he ain't got no fucking money has he do you know what I mean but even that talking to Quinton in a rude manner past him is, is too much disrespect in my opinion for it's like collateral damage because I'm so angry with him and I'm trying to communicate in the middle of it I'm saying he ain't got a fucking penny do you get me so if he had any money I'll fight to the death but he ain't got nothing so why, why even bring this up have you got, and I went, have you got 10 grand he went no I said well, you're looking fucking here I'm fighting for free you're having two fucking rounds no uh, two, two three minute rounds just went in there and demolished him. I get that, but it wasn't no two minutes, bro. The man that was hugging that was going on there, bro. Well, what can I say? I mean, uh, if he no, wants to, when, once I landed on him, once I landed on him, he was in shock and, and in, in panic. He didn't know where to go, didn't know what to do. And he, he was in surviving mode right from the first punch. Because once I hit him and he stood back and looked at me and smiled, I just thought, that hurt you, innit? Your, your brain's rattling now and he's just trying to hold it together now. Like he's, everything, everything he ever thought, I'm going to move out of the way, I'm going to do this and do that. That's gone. Everyone's got a plan. To get, get windmilled in the face. Windmill, you know. No, it was a straight. It was a straight right word. I, well, I've got. Oh no, because I've seen a body shot there, and I, bro, I felt that when you landed the body shot still. So, and I was watching the thing. I was not in person in it, right? But when I watched it back on YouTube, it's like I think a few shots hurt him. I wouldn't say all of them. Yeah. But I say, bro, there's a good few body ones, head shots. I think you gave him a jab, and that. Well, you know better, because you're not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, me, I hurt him. Every punch I hit him, licked his glass, licked his clot. Every punch hurts, rattles his brain. The first punch I hit him with rattled him. He looked at me like, you know, you just know, you just know he's hurt. And then it's just like, then I, then I could do what I want with him. Once I missed a couple of wild shots after I got back in the ring, I was just having fun. Just windmilling, because one guy said something, I heard someone in the, in, the, in, the, in the audience go, that's it, Quinton, make it look silly. And I thought, maybe it looks silly then. All right, cool, I'll, I'll, show, I'll just be completely silly then. I'm just like, windmilling everything. Just, that's why it all, going, all went really, really wild. Because I thought, I'll just take a piss now. Uh, yeah, it was fun to watch, though. Bro. It's, that's what I mean, bro. At the end of the day, it's better than anything you watch on TV. People, when you go there, you pay £40 pounds to watch people do fitness tests. Mm. Or you go there, pay £40 pounds to sit there, and you're like, fucking hit him? And you're just thinking, yeah, do something? And they're just like... Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You, you, you can look like a boxer or you can just get on with it. I hear what you're saying, but sometimes, man, I appreciate, you know, the sweet science of it more when they're trying to win on points. Yeah, Cause it's, it's, uh, Floyd Mayweather. Like. Yeah, because you guys also remember this ain't fair and you guys could just take all that brain damage for free. Because <laughs> when you work out the money you're going to get per... Working from when your camp starts to when the fight happens, bro, you get... Um, is it the same in boxing that it is in MMA? Half your purse if you turn up to fight, the other half if you win. As a professional, you get 25 pounds, you, you pay 25% to your manager. You, depending on if, if whether it's a, a, a learning fight or whether it's a paid fight, you, you, you pay your opponent. And then obviously, if it's a proper competitive fight, you both just to keep your purses. But you, you know, it's not, it's not, you don't, you don't do boxing for the money. Unless you get to a decent level and you get popular, then, it's, then, you, then you're, then you're I laughing. Get, but that, mostly, but most I'm boxers don't do it for the money. You know, the tig and tag sometimes that goes on because they ain't really fair on you, man. Just to Think you about all the training yourself. you have to go through, all the boots you have to buy, and the wraps you have to go, that's and the training running to the gym. It's you know that's costing. It, it's an investment into boxing. You don't really, you don't do it for money for until you until you get to a certain level and you get paid off. You know, to to good good like like Frankie Frankie Gavin for example, mm. he went through all the amateurs. He must have got he must have done re hundreds and hundreds of days of training and, and whatnot, vigorous thing. And then he got offered a hundred thousand pound by Frankie uh, Frank Warren. So n some people do get a lucky start, but not everybody gets the, the privilege of getting through all the amateurs because it's very clicky. And sometimes you get decisions that, that just aren't real decisions. I beat Noah Burton in the West Midland final and they give him the win but disqualified me. I hear that, but you see all that effort. 
not really fair on you guys all the time just to put on a good show. So if you come to yeah. that tick and tag match, and they're like, I respect it because I know what's coming with it. You get what I mean? I know even if you just do a, say a three month camp, fam, and then the fight, it's not covering what you would. No, no, we're not. It's a massive loss. It's a massive, you know massive loss. So and I don't mind, fam. I'll go there and I'll still spend my ticket if it's a tick and tag thing. And I wouldn't feel bad about it. But not if it's every fight you do, bro. Yeah. Especially if I think, yo, you could have had my man. Then it's different. If I'd have got 10 grand now, I'd have been, I'd have been a lot happier. And I think, uh, you know, I definitely want to make good money. And, I wanna, and, and what I want to do with that money, because I can't pull from an empty comp, is to open up a gym. Mm. You know what I mean? That's my, that's my goal. If I can get successful enough to do that, and I do believe I can. I believe I've got the character, I believe I've got the style, I believe I've got the people around me, and I believe I've got the, the ambition, and I've got the momentum, and I believe I've got, uh, I've got everything it takes to do it, and I'm going to just give it my all, and if it doesn't work, and at least I've got out of my seat. When I was lying in my bed, coked out my head, giving up on life, and when that kid got, unfortunately, his life taken away, that was when I was sitting there, and I thought, well, he didn't even get to 18, I'm, and I'm sitting here like a 32-year-old man on my bed, waste man material, I thought, I've got to fight for something, and that's, that was motivating me, that's what got me up. And I ain't looking back. I hear that. So it's good to see that you got that fire in your stomach. So Perry's going to feel it. Just oh, I'm sure he's going to pull out. I mean, if he watches this, he's going to think, I ain't fighting him. <laughs> nah, nah, I wouldn't nah. like to fight him. <laughs> now nah, I don't think he'll pull out now. I think it's too close to it to pull out. I mean, I've done. Oh, I, he kept saying it to me, though. And I feel like that was projection. He kept projecting onto me that he was going to pull out. Um, so I felt like... I feel like it's coming from somewhere that maybe this maybe he isn't like he's, he's he's quite comfortable. He's like, I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared of you. I'm not gonna put. You're not gonna pull out. I'm not gonna pull out. And I'm thinking, why are you even talking about pulling out? Like it seems to me it's coming from him. The energy. So maybe that's something that's going for the back of his mind. Fam, it's less than a month left. Fam. People get injuries the day before the fight. I hear that, but I don't think he. Fam, I don't think he. Well, can I hope he does. It. I hope he I does. Think <laughs> because of the peer pressure, he even has to limp in there. Like you know when you're pretending. You park in a disabled spot, but you don't have the badge. And <laughs> you walk out with him because you know what I'm But I think what it was with him, like I said, he's been watching me and he's thinking, taking on a big challenge or somebody that's got respect, even if he do, even if he does well against me, it's still. Gonna, I still think he deserves all the respect in the world for stepping up when no one else is. Everyone else is carrying away, and he's like, he's stood up. So I think he deserves respect automatically. And I think that even now he's taking on something that's you know a challenge really. Um, you can't lose. He's he's gonna win even if he loses. Do you get what I mean? Same way like when I took on when I'm taking on challenges, like uh, that's why I feel like people are now copying that kind of that meta that uh, algorithm sort of thing. Where I'm like I'm taking on challenges that even if I d even if I do well against these people, I'm doing well against Ty Mitchell. Um, that's a great look. That's a great look and a great win for us both. Do you get what I mean? Because um, even if he beat, manages to get the winner go over me, that I still there's still a lot of respect out there because not many people would get him with him because he's such a good level, high level operator. I hear that. I hear that. But not everyone can give a good account of themselves, but you know, it's, I hear what you mean, it's the same yeah, it's true, you don't want to go there, after all the hype, after all the press talks, after all the side interviews, and, and next thing you know, two, three bangs, you're out, it's, yeah. it's peak. But people know me though, like, uh, and, and people have acted like I haven't been beating people up all this in Birmingham, I've beaten, beaten up all the, all the pros, have been all the gyms, beating them, inspiring, they're sending them home and they're making like really depressing Facebook messages saying, oh, I can't believe people coming here and, you know, I don't have to pay, like, we, I've, I've already, I've been there, I've, I've put, I, I've been beating everybody for a long time. I, I know I'm good. I know I can do what I'm doing. I've proved it. I've got some good notable fights, notable wins. So it's not like you know I'm not going to show up. It's no, I'm not going to put on a good performance. That's that's mm. a given. You know, I've got one of the best knockouts that you'll ever see in any boxing. You can, you, anyone can show me a knockout as clinical as mine. I'll, I'll be impressed because I've looked on the internet and I haven't found one. My knockout is, is 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 just up there with probably one of the best knockouts you'll ever see in boxing. So you say you got better. Your knockout is better than some of Mike Tyson's knockouts. Like that Mike Tyson's level. knockouts are like um, body, head, concussive, yeah. many like working down and breaking your man down. Mine was, whap, just and he was unconscious, on impact. What was it? Double jab and cross, or was it? Yeah, it was like a like a jab and then like a. And it just, it just like butter, just like a knife through butter. So it was like, they missed that. It was a knife through butter, probably. It was just, I didn't even feel it. It was just like a, it was so clean. It was just so, if you look at it, mm. I've slowed it down. I've tried to, to show people the reality of it. I nearly killed the guy with the punch. Like it was that bad. He was out for three, like three minutes. He wasn't breathing for that. They were auctioning on him. They was all talking about how I'm up for a murder charge. It was all going, no, you can't really celebrate. Just relax, relax. So, um, you know, it was terrible for me. It was a horrible moment. I didn't even get to celebrate my win. A win that you know, uh, over a six round fight with, with a fucking, a, no a knockout artist who was beating everybody up, who was, you know, who, who was prematurely fighting, who had 80 amateur fights, and I had like, I probably had about 20 fights and maybe less. 
you know, um, and, and obviously I was trying to get back to get my revenge on Scott Moonan, so I was quite motivated and I was trying to get things back up to get that rematch because I'd got robbed from a decision, so I was really on it. And then when I ki nearly killed him, I, I gave up for two years because it, it freaked me out. It really freaked me out what you could, what, what I could do and what, what could happen to me. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, and the reality hits in and I was like drinking and somebody was talking to me after the day that the fight and was going, why did you do that though? Why did you do that? I was like, I don't know. I just couldn't give myself a, a justified reason why I nearly killed someone. I couldn't, I couldn't think of it. I couldn't think of anything that justified it. I just, there was no reason. And I, so I just stopped. So I thought I can't do it. But obviously with, with what happened with that lad and you know, I'm fighting for a cause. And obviously there's people out there, you know, it's part of the sport, isn't it? You know, it can go very wrong. We don't want it to go very wrong, but that's part of the sport and everyone knows what they're risking when they're going into the ring. So we just need to yeah, get on with it. I hear that. All right. So, you know, to wrap up, just give us the fight date details and how they can get to you for tickets, what the ticket prices are and what comes with each ticket. Right then, uh, yeah, seventy pound for VIP. You get a ringside with VIP. But forty pound tickets are just like you know your peasant tickets. So if all your peasants out there just want to get in there, what? <laughs> joking. Well, that's gonna be me, go. fam. I'm broke right now. <laughs> Isn't it from it's hard out here now. No peasant tickets, like look. Yeah, think about the venue. Don't even have heating, bro. I'm still here with no fucking coat. My coat's over there, bro. I do it on every interview, bro. Yeah. I just stand here freezing for some reason. Um. So. Yeah, forty pound for the standard behind the ringside. You can get the tickets off me. You can get them off Bazzi. You can get off the any. If you look at any of the people fighting on the card, any of the fighters under the card, anywhere that your favourite fighter is. But make sure you get your tickets in early. Make sure that you you know you, you don't mess around because uh, or tell someone you want tickets when you don't. Just make sure you support your favourite fighter or 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 you or you support the fighter that you don't like against the, the fight you don't like. It doesn't matter who you get your tickets off. Just make sure you reach out to them and grab them. Um, what was the other question you asked us? Uh, the date of it is January, January 8th, the 8th yeah. at H Street, Edge Baston. Uh, do you know what time doors open and what time the first fight is? I'm not concerned with the details. I've got it's not my... It's, if Baz is running it, Baz is showing. I'm, I'm just showing up to blow up, you know what I mean? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm here to put on a, a great performance for everybody. I'm a, and, uh, you know, preparing for calling me out is going to be an example to everyone else out there that's watching, all the people across the sea, Shannon Briggs, you know, all the, pe all the, all the experts down in London, everybody that, that pretending they're not paying attention to me. I know you're watching. And now you're going to watch real close to watch what sort of power I can possess. When I'm, when I'm like this now, this is the worst thing he can do is try and fight me. Because I'm going to absolutely murder him. You know when Sha if we, when you get on another live and he would shout yeah. him because then he goes, come on, champ, say, because I'm hench. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there, like, you get what I'm saying? Let that know, blood. He's one of my idols. You know, I look up to him <laughs> massively, I think. I you know, look at him, I think, that if that, I'd like that to be my dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't that. know, bro. You're going to have a headache, bro. If he's in that house saying, could, could, let's go, champ, let's go, All champ. day. Bro. You're going to run out of paracetamol, bro. <laughs> You're going to OD on aspirins, bro. You're done. He does go on a bit with it. Let's go. I'm sick of these fucking Rampage adverts as well. It's all every five minutes, Rampage doing this Rampage. And I'm like bored now. I just want to see a fight. Do you get me? And I think that's how people feel with me because I've been talking crap for so long. And that's why it's built it up so much because of the fact that there's a lot now that I've got to live up to. And it's 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 all motivation for me. And, 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 and obviously, to Perry being heavier, a Southpaw, and uh, obviously got a lot of good people around him is probably helping him out to try and take me apart because people do want to see me lose. So, you know, let's go and let's let, let, let's 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 best man wins if he does win. Fair play to you. I just don't see it happening. I hear that. But would you go into BKB? Fair Never, nah. Him. It's pretty macho. I was going to go just to fight Connor because he was avoiding me like a, the Weasley is. But uh, the, I've got no interest in it. It's too macho. It's like you can still demonstrate good. He, that people in that sport seem a bit bloodthirsty. And they seem like, you know, it's a bit it's a bit distasteful for me. I think classy in boxing is a bit more classy. It's a bit more of a touch. It brings a nicer crowd and it brings a nicer energy, you know. And it's, I, what I would represent is nice down gloves up. I don't, I don't, I don't represent, you know, I do, I do represent, I do think Gypsy having a fair fight, bare knuckle fight and all that is, is, is to be admired. It's still better than fucking using a weapon. But, you know, I, d I can't be an expert in everything and I'm not trying to be a, a bare knuckle boxer and a boxer and a football player and a basketball player. Just a rapper boxer. Entertainer as a whole. Yeah, definitely entertaining. So would you go turn this into, wait, see, I can't even say would you turn it into like, you know, some sort of. Uh, social media turned host or presenter because you keep changing your Instagram and restarting. I got did, I got banned being too because I keep comments and saying I'm gonna beat people up. I got banned because I keep saying to people I'm gonna beat them up. I'm gonna and I'm, I'm talking boxing talk yeah. and it's been flagged up as a threatening abusive behaviour and obviously I made I made comments on that I don't think transgenders should be beating up women um, and basically that that was flagged up as hate speech and it's just like they just took my account, you know and that's just that's just how it is isn't it. No, I get that, but is that something you're trying to do, then use this platform, this exposure, to then go into something else, making uh, creative money? 
I just be myself, mate. I don't really, sometimes, like, that's one of it all over the place. And most people that, you know, you know what you're getting with them. It's like a sweet shop or it's, they're just pure boxing or they're pure models. Me, I'm just all over, I'm a bit all over the place. I, you know, like, like Cryptic, I spoke to him like the other day and he said something similar. He says, if I like it, I'll do it. And that's, I don't really put a label on myself. I just, if I, I enjoy music, I enjoy fighting. I enjoy giving my opinions on the world. I might be wrong. I mean, and then I enjoy having a laugh. I enjoy taking a piss. You know, I'm just like anyone else. I call, you know, part of the lads. Like, I'm, I'm great to have at holidays. I'm great to have around. I hear that, so you're just having fun with it, and it is no real plan, and if something no. comes, you jump on it if it's weird. Yeah, 100%. I'm, o- I'm open. Oh, well, fam, to wrap up, how can the people stay up to date with the latest from you and get in contact with you? Uh, Tommy Hench, I'm mainly active on, on Instagram. Maybe too active, you might do your editing, so if you <laughs> just ignore me for a few days if I do, but always come back, because I've always got something new going on. Um, it says Tommy underscore uh, Hench one. Um, you know, you can find me on YouTube, TikTok, you know, anywhere. And I'm, I'm always willing to talk to you and engage with you as long as you've got good energy. Um, if you say anything I don't like, you, you know, you'd be instantly blocked. Fair enough. Well, uh, respect for coming on, fam. I appreciate you. Thanks so much for having us, bro. Thank no you. Worries.